Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. And as you can see, I've got a little project to do. So let's put this by, out of the way, um, and explain what I'm going to do. Now, as anyone who's seen any of my videos will know on gel plating, I actually utilise my prints. I mean, things like I make covers for my planners, I cover composition notebooks because I use them all the time. Um, I cover boxes with them because that's actually some of my ATCs which are on the go at the moment. I also covered my box of postcards with them. Basically, I use them a lot and I use them in my artwork and anyway, that, that's by the by. So my ring binder of um, stencils is getting a little large and I thought, okay, right, it's time to break it down into categories. Um, I want a ring binder for all of the older stencils that I use. Um, I want a ring binder for all of the PM Artist Studio um, stencils and masks I use. And also I want a bigger ring binder for my own collection of um, designs which I'm creating now in collaboration with PM Artist Studio so that I, I basically need three ring folders, um, three ring ones just from my station resort. I like to buy these ones. I've got this cover so I can slip something in. So my plan is I'm going to make um, a background that will slide in here slide in the spine as well. I don't want to put it back on it because the way the rivets are it means the image will stop here and that would just really mess with my brain. Um, I reckon if I do a 12 by 12 I can cut 10 and a half inches there for it to slide in and I believe that's 12 and that will leave me an inch and a half here and I think if I put an inch and a half strip down here maybe even back it onto a thin piece of white card before I slide it in. That would be really aesthetically lovely and I'll get on well with that. So my aim is in this video to create three backgrounds, utilising some of the stencils that I've got hanging around in three different colour backgrounds and have some fun with it. But I think I just want to get some colour on this plate. I've got my regular speedball brayer. I've got my timer set for about an hour. Um, which would be nice because I want to keep it under an hour. I like my videos to be about an hour purely because that's a good load up time. Right, let's get some colour on the plate. Now I really want, I know I want a blue one, I know I want a green one and I think the other one might be oranges or terracottas or that sort of colour. So I'm just going to come in with just some some paints I'm going to grab. Just I'm just going to show you what they are. I'm not going to go through naming every single bit of paint I'm pulling out. I'm just in the mood to create today. So I'm just trying to find the right colours I want to use. Um, I want to keep it reasonably light as well. So there's probably going to be white involved. Now, you've seen that I usually use um, a 5x7 plate as well. And I use that as sort of my palette. So first things first, let's get some colours down and just create some background colours, okay? As I said, I will try and show you the bottles as I go along, but knowing me, I'm probably gonna forget, and before long, I'm just gonna be utilising them, and you guys are not gonna see what I'm using, but I do apologise. I get a little bit carried away when I'm creating, and in doing that, I forget about things. So I'm just going to mix these up a little bit on the plate there, and I'm going to get them on here. The idea is just to take away the whiteness of the paper or the card that's already on that I'm using. I, I don't really want it to be white, white. I just want to keep it fresh and light and lovely. So there you go. That's first. Now I do have a brayer off sheet over to one side. Um, for those of you who have seen other brayer, um, other gel printing from me, You'll know I did have um, an inexpensive book that I was brayering off onto. And what I was planning to do was to actually make um, a brayer off journal from it. Well, unfortunately, I've discovered there was a little bit of a problem with that plan. And that was that the paper in the inexpensive art book, once it's actually brayered on and got a layer of paint, doesn't really like to fold it tends to rip rip and tear so instead I pulled out some presentation paper which is one that I sometimes use for um, 
signatures and t coffee dyeing anywhere and I thought right I'll just start again I intend to do the Brayer off journal but I needed to start again so I'm just going to start with some new pages and start all over which means it's probably not going to be made in time for Christmas which is when I was planning to make it for okay that's an interesting start to the day let's put that to one side all right do I mind that on there um probably not but I do mind that that's on there so let's just lift that out of the way, just using a bit of tissue paper. I don't mind if some of the colours cross over because, of course, this set of ring binders is going to be on the shelf. They're going to be next to each other. So if some of the colours leach over into each other, that doesn't overly bother me. I'm quite happy about that to happen, um, as long as they don't get to the point where everything is getting muddy. Um, I'm kind of keeping the grouping of colours I'm using over to one side just in case I want to revisit some of those colours. So as I've got that on the plate, I think I would like to reach for some greens now. Um, quite a vi quite vibrant green there. I thought I had a sap green here somewhere. I do have a sap green. Um, I think that'll be enough for that. Let's try those two with a little bit of white. I'm very conscious of adding white to everything for the simple reason that I don't want to go dark too quickly. So that's sap green. This is, what is this? I always forget. Um, anise green. I, I tend to review this as sort of chartreuse or my view of what chartreuse is anyway. And a little bit of white on here as well, just to get some color going. I don't, my bray has been cleaned off on my brayer off sheet, so I'm not overly bothered. Right, just going to get some of this on here in patches. I don't want it to look like camouflage. So, so that's one of my aims is to not make camouflage green. But I do want some fun. So just get it onto my brayer off. I was slightly upset actually because some of the brayer offs I did well, absolutely beautiful. I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to turn them into something else instead. I think if I back, um, if I back the pieces from the art book, I think I'll still be able to utilize them. Why isn't that sliding around for that side? Um, so there you go. I can't wait for my barren to arrive. There'll be a video, hopefully soon, um, about a piece of equipment that I've bought to, instead of me doing this with my hand all the time, there's a baron and I'll show you exactly what it is when I get one. Um, I ordered it as a treat for myself for my birthday, which is just after Christmas. I'm a Christmas baby and in there lies part of the problem. I'm a Christmas baby. So sometimes your birthday gets merged into things that are not necessarily your birthday. All right, let's lift this off. Okay, liking that. That's going in the right direction. Pick up with. Right, the other combination I wanted to use was sort of in the orangey range. So what's that? That sunflower yellow. I really like that sunflower yellow. That's going to be way too orange. Um, that's just a generic sort of brownish terracotta colour. I think those two will do. Let's get them on. This is just a bottle of different paints that I put into here. So sorry, I cannot tell you what brand that is because it's probably two or three different brands. As, as a bottle or a tube of paint gets emptier, I tend to just put it into one bottle because to me, it's not about brands. I'm not sponsored by anyone. Um, I'm not paid to advertise anything, which is fine. Um, so I don't have have to deal with um, having to stick with one brand all the time. There's, there's something really nice about that kind of freedom, to be honest. Although, if anyone out there wants to have me as an ambassador for your paint range, I'm up for a discussion on that. Because goodness knows the amount of paint I go through creating videos and art pieces. It's, it's, it's a bit of a surprise, really, about how much you use. But I've not brayed this in too much because I quite like the fleck look that that's got to it. Let's some of this on there. 
actually I'm liking that already that's that's interesting to me and put that on top um, where's that tissue paper gone right. um, I tend to use tissue paper for a couple of reasons it keeps my hands clean well saying clean look at the state of them already it tends to keep my hands cleanish um, also when I'm rubbing on the back why isn't it doing it with this piece? There you go. Um, my hand sort of glides over the top of the page. Um, and it's only a piece of tissue paper. I don't mind it gets a bit scrunched up. Ooh, I'm liking that already. Okay, that's cool. Liking that. I don't mind what is left on the, on the plate. What I might do is because yellow is part of green if I put the green one down I might be able to pick up some of that yellow now what what I think is happening is when there's thicker patches of paint on on the plate and as you see I don't leave my um, 12 by 12 on the plate that long and what happens is it tends to pull the top layer of paint off and leave the bottom paint there if I was to leave this for a while it would pick up more. But see, I don't mind that. That's interesting to me. So, right. Um, let's get a bit of a damp cloth just to clean this off because I'm going to change now to some other colours. I want the blue one to have a little more something. Well, this is just chalk paint. I don't even know whether it's got a colour name. It's just it's pale blue as far as I'm concerned. So. And I quite like this, but I think I'd like to put something into this that's a little paler. Now, what I want to do here is I want to put some of this on the plate, but I don't want to cover the plate entirely. I want to cover the paint, uh, cover the pl plate. I can't speak, can I? It's not a good thing when you're a YouTuber, is it? You can't speak. I want to come in and I want to put bits on this plate just so that I've got little bits of interest that might transfer over to my finished piece so I'm just going to get this down reasonably quickly because I do know that chalk paint dries quite quickly for me I don't know whether that's a general or whether that's the brand um, I think it's probably because it's got more pigment in suspension in it and of course the pigment is of a more chalky nature Therefore, it dries out quicker. Right, so all I'm trying to do is just to put a bit of interest into this. There you go. Now, this was an opaque layer. So as you can see, it's given a bit of push and pull to this. I quite like how that worked, actually. Right, so anyway, let's just have a little thing. So I've got green here. Um, I quite like to put a little bit of green. And I don't mind if it lifts this blue off here as well. So I'm looking for something that's a bit... Oh, actually, that's not bad. That's a sage colour. And if I remember, that is also an opaque off the top of my head. Ooh, don't want that bit of grunge on there. So I think it'll have the same effect. And I'll just put some pieces of this in here, just, just to play the push and pull, as I said. Let's pop this down on there and give it a bit of a rub down have a little bit onto my brayer off sheet now I'm going to pick that up off this plate because I don't want the next colour to have green on it I don't want the orange and yellow one to have green sorry if I'm shaking you it's not my intent in the slightest so it would be lovely to have a complete setup for videoing with the camera mounted in the ceiling so it's not affected by anything I'm shaking or moving. But you know what? That's a heck of a long way off, guys. So let's pull this one up. I'm surprised it didn't lift the previous, but there you go. That's given me another grunge layer. Loving that. And it took the acidness out of that a little bit, which is great. Now, this one... I think I'm going to add a little bit of white to this one and I think with the white I may actually add 
Or am I, I going to add a little bit of this? Now this is transparent, so I don't expect it to give too much. Although I like this little grungy thing off there. That'd be nice to be rid of that. So let's put that back. So I'm just going to colour my chalk paint a bit. Now the reason I shake my tubes of chalk paint is the chalk paint seems to separate out in here. Again, it's probably the way I store them. I store them standing upright. So therefore, all of the things that are in suspension will sink to the bottom. That's okay. I don't mind that. So I'm just going to mix this around a bit. Just to add a little bit of a pale lemon look to it. And again, just streak the little bits across here. Not looking for a lot of coverage because I liked what I had. Just do a little bit onto my brayer off sheet over here. I think I'm warming up to change my brayer off sheet. So let's just sit this down here. So let's just press that down. Make sure it's nicely in contact. Right, I just paused the camera while I actually did that because you don't need me to see me sticking a piece of paper to something else. That would just be a really boring thing to see. I am absolutely adoring the way that's going. This one isn't going to take a lot before I'm happy with that one, I can tell you. So let's go back to the blue one first of all. This is the blue one I'm talking about. And I'm thinking because of this stencil, which is the one I want to use, and that stencil. This one is going to be for my older stencils, stencils from other designers. And I'm liking the sort of theme of, of blues and the ocean. And I want to find one of these. Like that's always a good one, waves, without any pun in being intended. I want, I want to use something that, I think it is going to be waves actually. I want to use something that's going to give me almost an ocean feel. So I think we're going to pull these out. So this is Waves. It's a set of two. Well, stuck together set of two, obviously. There you go. So that's Waves. And this is... I couldn't tell you for the save my life who did this. It's it's Nautilus something, I think. And this is just a bubble one. I don't know whether that's by me or by someone else. Um, when this airs, I think I have actually done... Um, a flip through of my stencils because I was asked to do that so um, I might put that one in the description box actually so you can get a better look at that so right um, I think I want to work with waves first now for me I want to add a little bit of darker blue and I want to add a little bit of white there's yellow on this plate doesn't worry me I'm okay with that um, what blue is this Bluebird, that's not exactly, oh, that's more the blue. I was looking for something like this, which is, this is ultramarine, and I'm gonna add some white to it. And again, I'm going to mix the colors on my palette first, and then put them on here. I don't intend covering the whole thing, because I don't need to. I'm looking for patches of color that I can actually just lift off. So let's put that over there where it was before. So a little bit of a mixing up of that and just come in just to put something down that I'm going to be able to lift off. Right, let's just, where's that stencil gone? Well, I want to use this stencil first. I'm going to come in and I want to press down reasonably firmly just so that I've got patches of it lifting off. And by pressing down, I'm pushing the cards through to the plate and so you can see, it's just giving me sections of it, which is exactly what I wanted to do. There you go. So that's just added little bits of interest to that, liking that so far. I'm going to peel this off. Now, I could lay this on something else, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do, however, is just grab one of these and see if I can pick anything up onto, onto this postcard. Um, I always back my postcards after I've created them, so I'm never worried. See, that's already made that a lot more interesting. This is a bit of a dark one. Let's see if I can bring more into play on that one. There you go. It's just added a ghost of something. So, right, I've got stuff on this plate. I don't mind it being there, so it's just 
take a bit of it and put it onto my brayer off sheet because that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, I want to add into this one now because I've got the blue into it. I want to come in with the other stencil that's in this, um, in the waves range, this one, which is different to this one. As you'll see, they are, they are slightly different because of the holes in them. I like that look. So I'm going to come in now with some white and do the same thing in different areas. So as I'm only using white this time, I'm going to do it directly onto the plate. Just get myself a layer down. Doesn't have to be too thick of a layer. Just needs to be enough so that when I push on the stencil, I'm able to pick stuff up through it. I'm going to come in now. I want to keep the orientation almost the same. And I'll pick up patches of this. And remember, we're just talking areas. We're talking layers. We're talking putting detail into it. There you go. So I'm getting some nice areas of that in there now. Let's take that out of there. And this one got darker and darker and darker. So let's just get that one a little lighter for the future. So let's pull this one out. This is called, what's it called? Ripley Railroad. And I've ordered the bigger sizes because I work a lot of time with big plates. Well, it's 12 by 12 is my plate of choice. So let's put it that way. That's quite an expanse and I think that's going to be fun and I might use that in one of the top layers to go with it. So let's pull out Geometric Polynesian and that can be used later on as a more upper layer. Right, now I'm going to change tack slightly on this one where before I put the paint down and then put this over it, I think I'm going to put this down and then put the paint over it and then pick it up on this. Now. I think I want to go back a little brighter, so I'm going to use this colour again, but I'm going to use it with white this time. Don't care there's stuff on my plate because blue is part of green. So no problems with that whatsoever. Let's put some white on here as well. So just give myself a bit of a paler colour and give this a reasonably good brayering. I'm not going to beat it to death, but I'm going to make sure I've got something down into the apertures. I can come off there onto my brayer off. Now, again, I could lift this off and put it onto another piece of paper, but I'm not going to because I'm trying to move quite quickly with this. I'm going to come in, I'm going to lay this down and pick up sections of this. I'll probably end up with stuff left on the plate. But as you can see, that's added something lovely to that. Loving that as I've got that down, let's get a few of these old postcards on here, the ones that didn't quite make the grade, and see if we can't get them to make the grade this time round. Right, let's take this one that I thought was quite an eventful, should we say. Right, let those sit for a second. Oops, I nearly wore that. It wouldn't be the first time, I can tell you. Right, let's get a bit of that tissue paper. Clean off the plate. So, never mind. You know, I can't believe that we're already in November. I'm like, where the heck did this year go? Now, it's been a busy year, I must admit. I, I've... Since all the COVID restrictions have lifted in this country, life has started very much going back to what it used to be. Um, not, not completely for me, because obviously um, lots of stuff changed in my life. Excuse my arm a minute. Um, lots of stuff changed in my life. So things haven't gone completely back to normal and they never will because normal is different for me. That's interesting. I wonder if I get a little bit in that corner. Um, whereas I used to be 100% of the time, cake decorating, designing, judging, traveling. Now I've, I've opened up my artistic side in a different way. And, and I'm loving it, to be honest. I am absolutely loving the fact that I get to create. I get to share. I get to learn. I get to... That's interesting, too. I think those two I'm going to put to one side because I've got a feeling I don't want to do anything more with those at this point in time. Right, 
So we're up to this one now. I do love this. I'm going to have to be careful I don't lose this. I'm, I'm really liking that. That could almost very well nearly be done. So, right. So this is Quilted Crop Circles. As you can see, I tend to use this one a lot. So I'm going to use this one instead. And I might put a couple of them on the plate at the same time. Not the smaller ones. I use the smaller ones for a lot of the time I use them for putting texture paste through onto stuff. But these two I think will work wonderfully well. I think what I need to do is I need to put paint down. Yes, put paint down and put these over the top and then try and pull pieces out of it. Because no matter how good I am at brayering, I'm going to go past the out. Actually, yes, I'm going to go over the outside edge. I can't be... I can't be that controlling about it. So the question is colour. Now I'm loving I'm loving this, but part of me would quite like a bit of blue in there. Um, and quite a light blue, like turquoise would look lovely in there. And I think I want turquoise. Okay, let's go with the flow, guys. There's stuff on here. I know there's stuff on here, so not sure. Ooh, that doesn't need to be there. Try not to pick these things off over your plate, guys, because they drop down onto your plate and then you have crumbs all over the place. And I do it all of the time. And that's why I'm telling you, because I do it. And I think they did it there as well. Maybe that's a crusty bit. Um, it's probably not going to damage your plate, but you're going to spend more time trying to pick off the pieces than you are anything else. So let's get this out onto this plate. Now, what I'm going to have to do, once I've done all of this, by the way, is I'm going to have to wait for these backgrounds to dry before I'm going to be able to color, um, cut them up and actually use them. So I'm going to have to film that tomorrow, I should imagine. Right, I'm going to come in, I want to press down reasonably well to get things like that off it. See, I've got patches and I'm liking the patches. But I don't want to go too overboard with this process. I just want to get some on there. Right. I think maybe just a bit more in there might work. There you go. That's enough for that. So let's look at where we're at, shall we? So we've got this one, which I'm really loving. This is my underwater theme type one. Thinking at this point, I need to think about now maybe some metallics and maybe going a little bit darker. This one is sort of my greenery, wildlife-y, sort of jungly sort of theme one. Liking the subtleness in this. Again, I'm going to probably go with darker green. There's a good chance I may come in with this again in the opposite direc direction and actually sponge through onto it. And then we've got this one, which is looking really, really interesting. This will now need some white and possibly some pink off the top of my head. And... Now, I had mentioned that I wanted to put bubbles on this. And this is just, I can't remember whether this is one of mine or a shop bought one, because I've got one that's similar to this. Um, so I'm not sure what this one is. I do want to put some bubbles on here. And I'm wondering whether I want to sponge the bubbles on. I might want to sponge the bubbles on, actually. So what I'm going to do is I've got, I usually buy household sponges or baby sponges or car wash sponges, whatever sort of sponge you can get, and I cut them into squares. You've probably seen me do this before, but I like to then sponge my paint through onto sections of this because I've got more control. Right. I'm thinking I want to go a combination of darker and lighter. So I'm going to, this is just a generic one. This is just one of my empty out bottles. So that's a bit of that colour. Where's the original colour? I've got this colour again. So I'm just mixing up on the plate. Just little mixtures of it. This was the chalky one that's on here, so I don't think I'm going to use that one again. It may have been the frosted one. Um, this was in the original, although you can't really see it on there. Was it in the original? No, it wasn't in the original. It was white that was in this as well. So I'm going to come in and put a little bit of white on the plate as well. Now what I'm doing is I'm using the flat side of the sponge. You can pinch it if you want it rounded. Totally up to you. 
I'm going to come in. I'm literally going to dab into each one of them. So I have some on here and now I'm going to come in and just sponge this color through. And then periodically I'm going to change which color I reach for, whether it's lighter, whether it's darker, just because it will give me variety in the final look. Now, I tend to work in threes, which a lot of artists do when they're grouping stuff because it's pleasing to the eye. So let's lift this off. So you can see I'm just getting really nice shape to it. I'm going to come in from a different angle now. Change the stencil around to be pointing in a different direction just in case because I don't really want things to look mirrored or planned. I just want things in there. See, that's nice. And I think a patch down here would do good. And I don't mind the bigger ones down here. And I might use more of the darker green, the darker teal or turquoise, whichever it was on the bottom here. A little bit of white to give some highlight here. So I do this on, on here and not on the plate. I could have done it on the plate, to be honest with you. I absolutely could have done it on the plate. But see, that's just given me some really subtle bubbles on there. Right. But I do have the Nautilus shell to go on this. That's possibly going to be the end of that one. This is the jungle one. I do think this needs something in it. And I think I need to consider what goes with green. I did say pink, didn't I? What sort of pink have I got? Could I go copper, actually? Maybe I'll go a bit of copper on that one. Right. Um, yes. I thought I'd left it somewhere. It's the Polynesian one. Um, geometric Polynesian, I believe it's called. So I'm going to use a bit of Amsterdam copper. Actually, I don't want that down first. I want to put the paint down first. It's a lovely creamy copper, this one. It's one of my favourite coppers. Currently, it's one of my favourite coppers. So... Right, now I've got to work quite quickly with this guys, so if I'm hurrying, please excuse me, it's just that metallics dry really quickly here. And I don't expect to get a huge amount out because it was such a thin layer. But oh, I did get a huge amount out. Let's just see if I can get a bit more of that out of there. There you go, that's really cool, loving that. There is stuff under here. How much of that's going to lift off, I don't know. But let's just stick it on the postcard and and see what happens. That's the reason I like gel plating. It's all about surprises. Okay, that's subtle. Liking it though, right? That one can wait for the next layer. Um, I think I'd like to put a little bit more of this pattern on there, but not necessarily in that colour. So let's see. Um, Greens, I'm thinking, I wonder. Right, I've got this high viscosity, um, Prebo, I can never say that name. I'm terrible at names anyway, so I don't even know why I pretend to try. Um, this metallic orange, which is absolutely beautiful. It is a transparent, however. So I know that I'm not gonna get a huge amount through the stencil or the mask, whichever way you're viewing it. However, I am going to get something. So I think if I come in and just press and lift, probably press a little bit harder than that Griffiths or nothing's going to happen. Let's put a little bit more of that up there. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. That's why I'm not talking about that. I think a little bit more down that side as well. Okay, that's getting where I'm thinking I want it. Right, we've got stuff on here. This has already got some copper or orange on it. So let's just enhance that a bit by taking that off there. Ooh, I love the shine on that. That one's going to be at the next stage. This is gonna come off. Oops, come on, Mr. Stencil. Up you go. So where are we up to? Right, loving where this is going. This one needs to go just rest for a second. Right, oh, I've got stuff dropping on the floor here. Right, this one. I said I wanted some pink in this one, but I have to be careful how I put it on there. So I'm going to have to find myself a stencil that will allow me to pick up. Oh, actually, that might be it. I don't think I'm going to get to dragons and butterflies today. 
Well, I do quite like those ones. I think I want to use this one because it's easier to pick up sections within, and this is Dragon Wing Stained Glass. Another one I really, really like. I like all of them. What am I talking about? If I didn't like them, I wouldn't keep them. I mean, I know that sounds a bit brutal of me, but seriously, if I don't like something, it's not staying. Right, now, I'm looking for... I was looking for a different sort of magenta to this one. I can't seem to find it. I guess I don't. It's probably per process magenta, not permanent magenta. But I want to add some pink to it. Um purely because um, I don't want it this deep, this pungent. What's it with these little rings? I should get into the habit of cleaning my the lids of my paint, which I obviously just ignored because I just closed it on it again. So I'm looking for a lighter pink. And I'm going to brayer it through the stencil. So I'm going to mix it up a bit before I start. That's, that's more what I was looking for. Right, let's just get that even around my brayer. Now I'm doing it through the stencil, purely because that will give me a cleaner outline. The disadvantage is that it's going to dry reasonably quickly, so I'm going to have to make sure I don't lollygag around like I am. But it does mean when I lift it, it's not going to lift huge patches of it it's going to allow me to just lift areas see it's just give me subtlety I want one little bit in there thinking about right yeah. that's looking really busy I think at some point I'm going to have to put something on that to push that into the back actually why don't I do it now I think I just want to put a really thin covering of white on here and do what I call a kissing technique. And the kissing technique is I just let um, the card or the 12 by 12, whatever it is, just touch down lightly, just to frost out or give a bit of an illusion of um, just lightening things up is what I'm trying to say. Obviously, <laughs> words are escaping me today, guys. Not good. So I'm just gonna come down. I'm literally gonna let it drop on there and just pick up pieces. I don't want masses of it. I just want little bits. See, just just enough to lighten some areas. And I think I might do that with this one as well as I've got, got the plate on the go. Just add it. It's one of the little tricks I use if I've if I've inadvertently gone too dark on stuff, which I don't think I have this time. Um, I tend to do that. I'm gonna do it on this one as well. Um, just to pick up bits of whiteness, just to break up stuff. That's lovely. Now this time I want to work with this Nautilus shell. Now I have no idea which sections are going to be which sections when I finally cut this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three sections of this on here. And I'm going to use that sponging technique again because I just want to have it on here almost blended into it and I'm definitely going to use blue and I think I've got a few blues here and I'm not really sure what blue is that that's true blue doesn't look too true blue to me actually if I got Prussian I'm sure I bought Prussian blue the other day I did Prussian blue right because I'm kind of using this as I would use black in this instance because I like to add drama with a touch of black but obviously black is not what I'm wanting to do on this one so that's Prussian blue so I'm going to make sure that I hold this down quite firmly take off as much as I can from my sponge so that it doesn't go under the edge of the sponge I would rather tap this down a hundred times to get a crisp image than try to do it quickly and having it bleed underneath. I absolutely love this stencil. I wish I could find out who did this one. I'm at a really big craft show next weekend um, at Cake International, not Cake International, what am I talking about? At um, the International Exhibition Centre at the NEC. 
and I've got a feeling I might see this stencil. I'm going to try and look out for the stencils I've got in my collection because I feel really bad because every time I show them, I can't tell you who they're from. I'm trying to, as I come across them again, when I'm, I'm looking through websites and stuff, if I find them again, I tend to write, write the name of that stencil now on the, on, on the page in which I'm keeping the stencil, purely because it just helps you guys if you love the stencil and you're looking for it. Something I should have done in the first place probably, but you know what? I wasn't thinking when I did it. Sorry, I was whispering there, not a good idea. I was saying, I wasn't thinking when I did it, so. Let's see, right. Now I'm very tempted at this point to maybe come in with a little bit of white on this as well. So I might do that actually. Let's just leave that to one side, get, get myself a little square. God, I can't believe how dark this has got. Looking through the screen, everything is the same for you, but I can assure you it's gone majorly dark here. I think it's heading for a storm. Right, so I'm just sponging a little bit of the white, just on areas, just to give it a bit of dimension, just to almost give it a 3D effect. And what I'm doing is I'm just going around part of the curve on the inside. I can't be that accurate because it's a big old sponge. But you know what, it might just add a little more dimension. So if I take that off, I'm loving that. I'm absolutely loving that. Right, I'm gonna do that again here. But this time, I think I'm going to do a smaller area of it and not, not get the whole of the Nautilus shell. Just lift up a section of it. And that's what I like about this stencil is I can pick up pieces of it. Now, there are, there are other shell stencils out there, obviously, that you can do a similar thing with. Um, it's just this happens to be the one I've always used. So I'm going to come in again with the white. It's a bit whiter than I was expecting it to be there. I don't mind that. So I can come over the top with a little bit of dark just to capture that again. There you go, just a little hint of it there. And I think I might try, see if I can do a bit that's, oh, don't put your that in there, thank you. Um, I might try and just capture part of this up here to hint that it's on the page. I quite like things going off the page. I don't know about you. Oh, if I just hit you with my head. I think I did. If my head hit the camera, I apologise. It's always a bit of a balancing act. How close do you get the camera versus how much space do I need to get my big old head and hands underneath it? Um, yeah, I think most, most YouTubers struggle with the same sort of thing. Let's come in with a little bit of white on this one too. Blend this out to give it a little more, a little more drama, should we say? I just want a little bit more dark in the middle, so I don't lose the middle of that spiral. Oh, I'm very happy with that one. Right, this may be finished. I'm going to put it on the floor behind me, just so it's out of my way. But I think, I think that's done, guys. I absolutely will. I think if there's anything else I would do to this. Yes, there is. Right, I'm just going to bring in the bubble stencil again. And I'm just going to pick up the one that had the white on it, mix it with a little bit of the darker blue, and really put in some very faint bubbles here and there. See what I mean? Just to add a little bit of something into this that wasn't there before. Just being ever so careful not to overdo it. I think that's it. Right, stop, Griffiths, you're going to ruin it. Right, we'll look at this t tomorrow or in a few seconds for you when this one's done because I'll need to decide to cut it up wherever. I think that's lovely. Leave that to one side. Right, so the next one is green. Now... I'd quite like to put black on this one, I think. 
I know it sounds a bit dramatic, but I actually quite like the idea of putting some black on here. And if I'm going to put black on here, I think it's probably going to be with my wonky net. I really do need to order the bigger version of this. I think there's a bigger version. I use this all the time though, because I've got the squares in there. I like the squares in here. I'm going to cut one of these sponges in half, because I know I won't need a huge one for this. Now, I'm going to use black, literally just black. I mean, a lot of the time I will use Prussian or I'll use Payne's Grey or another colour that is as dramatic as black, but not black itself. But in this instance, I'm going to use black. This is just Mars black. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to look to see where the copper is, and I'm going to choose areas that are not coppered. Again, I'm going to take most of this off my stencil, uh, off my sponge, and I'm going to work in areas, and I'm going to pounce this up and down on my stencil until I can see it's no longer leaving anything on the stencil itself. And that's my indication that I've just blended it out. Do you see what I mean? It just gives it a nice area. I'll turn this around a little bit so that I might be using another area of it so we haven't got repetition. Repetition of design is okay, but repetition of the same exact pattern sometimes, for me, doesn't work. Unless I'm intentionally doing it. So it's weird. It has to be the individual pieces that talk to me. Well, I've got a feeling I'm not going to stick with three on here. I think there's probably going to be patches of five on here. Now, the other thing I'm thinking about here is I know this green one could potentially be. Um, let's go that way up. Uh, potentially be in a black ring binder, so there's going to be black framing the pieces anyway. I, I couldn't get three black ring binders. I could only get two black ring binders. I've got one that's navy blue. So I think the navy blue one, as you saw, with the Nautilus shell on it, is going to be for my older, my older stencils, the ones from Unknown Designers. And that's fine, because that's why I chose navy, uh, chose blue for that one. Because for me then, um, I could use a Nautilus shell on the cover and actually at the same time it meant that it's recognisable to me at a glance that it's the older stencils and not the new ones. Okay, liking that so far. I'm going to leave this by here because I may be using this again. Right. That's almost done, isn't it? I've got this colour that I absolutely love called Buttermilk. And I think I'd quite like to bring in a little bit of this design, which is a design in the background. But I want to be really, really, really careful about it. Um, I want to turn this 90 degrees. Because therefore, because I can see the pattern below is running in that direction. If I run it in this direction, it will be better for me. I was going to use this, but this is quite dominant here. So I think I'm going to use... A little bit of this buttermilk colour and as you can see it is just a little tiny bit of the buttermilk colour just to bring in something to these patches that look a little bit empty to me. Again not much on my sponge. I know this is an opaque colour so I want to make sure that I don't overload my sponge. This is just hinting at little areas of this design. See what I mean? You can hardly see it in there. Well, I know it's in there. I'm going to turn this around this way, actually, because I quite like that bit. Now, I could have done this on the plate. I, I could have rolled out on the plate and I could have stenciled on the plate then lifted it off but I find by using a sponge I've got so much more control in how much is on there and I think we're calling that one done guys we'll take a look at all of them once once I've completely finished up but I think that one that one also is done okay this one this one needs something and I'm tempted to say it needs black but I think it needs 
it needs something less than black. I think it needs terracotta or something. Right, I'm going to actually put this sponge in the bin and I'm going to get a bit of kitchen paper and take this black off here. Normally I would use it on something, but I know that if I've got it hanging around, guess what? I'm going to put my fingers in it and I'm going to make a complete and utter shambles of everything because I get, I get black on everything and that's not what I want. Right, I think this needs something to unify it all. Let's take these stencils out of the way. Excuse my arms, guys. Right, I want to keep this one out. I think I want to keep that one out. I kind of have an idea, but I'm not sure that the idea is a sound idea. Okay, I want to unify this background by putting a glaze over the whole thing. Now a glaze is a, normally, for me, a really thin layer of a transparent colour. And I'm thinking it needs to be sort of an orangey tone. Um, I've got a few that I'm considering, but I need to make sure that they're actually a transparent. I'm just, just having a look through my um, colours over here, guys, just trying to work out which one it is. Sorry about that. Okay, quinacridone burnt orange. It's a transparent by Golden. I can see it's transparent because they do these hand painted slashes on there, so I can see what it is. I need to put down a really quite a thin film of this because if I put down too much of it, it's going to make everything well, it's just going to make everything orange. <laughs> so I think I pro oh, that was a bit more than I expected. So I'm probably going to brayer it onto here and then brayer a lot of it back off again. As you can see, it's a really bright colour. So I want to make sure that I get good coverage on my plate. But at the same time, I take off a lot of it as well. So guess what colour my brayer off sheet's going to be. So that's fine with me. Now I'm just letting the brayer skim over the top of this. And I want to get this off so that I can see, see my little discs in the middle. And that is just a sticky foot to stop my printer, uh, my mat from sliding around. I, I like them because unbeknownst to me when I did it, um, they really help me seeing how thin I've gone. And I think that's probably as thin as I'm going to be able to go without this drying out so I'm going to be quite quick with this it's going to be dramatically changed let's let's not ifs and buts about this guys it's going to be orange I'll get a bit of this on the back so I can just press down I'm so looking forward to that barrel being here so I'm really pushing it down now. I want to make sure that everything's got a good coating of it. If it hasn't gone all the way to the edges, that kind of doesn't bother me with this. But... Right. I think the truth will out on this one. Ooh, that really did go dark, didn't it? Okay. That went dark. Um, interesting. I... I lost a lot of what I wanted on there. Right, I think we'll have to do a little bit of a something something on there. Right, first of all, I need to put some white back into this. I I must have put too much on this plate to start with. That was a learning curve, let's call it that. So I'm just going to get some of this on here. This is just white. Again, trying to do a thin coating because I'm just going to do that kissing technique that I have where I'm just going to let the paper barely touch down on it. And I'm going to lift off pieces. This, this piece is really quite wet at the moment. so Right, that's okay with me. I'm all right with that. Right, let's get some of that yellow back. Where's that yellow gone? Right, this was the yellow that I used. I really like this yellow. I'm going to put this back on here. I'm going to work on the print directly. And what I want to do is just put some brayer pieces on here. 
just to pull some of that colour back for me because I liked it. So just skimming across the top, just adding hints of. Right, I think that's that's enough of that one. So we might want to do another colour of that. I'm trying to remember all the colours that are on there and obviously I can't look back at my own video because it's not even finished filming yet. Right. Um, I had this colour in there, didn't I? This was that teal colour. Where's that teal colour gone? I think it was this colour. I might do what I did with the sponge, but I'll do it with teal and white this time. So here you go, this, this is a bit of a learning curve for both of us, isn't it? When it goes wrong, make sure it goes right. So I'm bringing both of those colours together on my sponge and I'm going to put the design back in. Now I'm going to work from the inside to the outside, just adding little bits here and there of the different bits of colour. I'm hoping that the stencil doesn't stick to the surface of the paint. I'm going to start blending in the lighter colour the further out I go. And I'm not looking for a perfect impression, I'm just looking for an impression. Let's just lift you off there. There you go, that's what I was thinking about. Again, let's see if I can repeat that roughly here, but on a smaller scale. Again, take that off there. Loving that. But I think I want to put half one in here and I'm going to work more with the lighter shades this time. See, there's always a way to start again, guys. It's a mind shot. I feel I am. Yes, barely, but I am. Um, there's always ways to bring it back. And the worst case scenario is it looks absolutely awful. What do you do? You wait till it's fully dried. Then you put a brand new coating of white over the top and you start again. You'll end up with a very thick paper, but that's okay. Right, I think I want to just turn this around so that I can work on another area of it. Come in down here. I'm actually quite liking this. I'm going to use quite a bit of white in this one. I'm liking this. I can't say I'm liking it better than the original colour scheme, but you know what? It's a different colour scheme. I think I'd like one of these just linking those two together. Not sure I've got enough paint to do the whole thing, but visually it will link the two. Okay, I'm liking that now. That looks a bit oldie worldy painted wally typey thingy. <laughs> Sorry, obviously having an having an out of body experience for the way my mouth is going at the moment. Right, let's see if I can just pick up some of this. We may end up with something I hadn't planned, but like even better, guys. So, right, I'm really thinking I'd quite like some chalk paint on this. Have to be a little bit careful about this because I do not want to lose this all over again. So, I'm going to take a look at what I've already used in the other ones and see if anything's calling out. Okay, dots is already in there. I can't use Nautilus. That's too big of a design. That's a potential. I don't want the weight right out of all of them. I've already used those, so I can't use those again on this. I think I want to put dots on this. I'm terrible. I go. I use dots a lot. Um, question is colour. Hmm. I wonder. I've got chalk pink here, and as you can see, 
it's not a million miles away from the pink that's on there. Now I know this chalk pink is absolutely opaque. It's a chalk colour, it's not going to be transparent. So I need to get a sponge. I'm going to leave it a little longer this time, make sure there's nothing on the back of this. I'm going to come in and lift a little bit of it off and just do areas. Um, I'm dabbing with just a little bit of paint on the sponge because I want it to be light. I want this to be almost a ghosting effect on it, if there is such a thing. See what I mean? It's just, and I want this to help tie the designs together. There's probably loads of you out there screaming, no, don't do that, do this. But you know what, I can't hear you guys. That's another thing I've got to do next year too, is I've got to belly up to the bar and actually start doing lives. I keep saying year after year I'm going to do lives and I'm just, I'm a little bit technically challenged and, and a live sort of scares me because of course I'm on my own um, and if things go wrong I don't know how to repair them or stop them up. In there needs some. Okay I'm liking where this is going now. Again it was a completely different it completely different design a little while ago, so just a few up there. I am, however, considering doing some terracotta to give drama. Just a little bit along here. Right, I think. I think I need to stop there. I, do, I don't want to add any more of this to this. I'm just going to brayer, brayer this so I can put it onto my brayer off mat. Sheet, sorry, not mat. Right, I need to think carefully now. Now, I would like to add some drama to that. And I think drama is either going to be black, or it's going to be a metallic, it's going to be a dark brown. Sorry, I wasn't planning on pulling my old ring folder in, but there's one in here that I think I want. So I'm not sure I can find it quickly. So I'm not sure how much you're going to see of this, guys. I'm trying to balance this in my hand and I do it. And there's an Aztec type design in here that I, I use occasionally. Please be easily found. This one. Oh. Deco Southwest. I think I want that in there. You can see what I mean by this is getting overstuffed. I need to break it down into um, other other ring binders because it's getting a physically hard to lift that thing. Right now, do I? I want brown. I mean, I don't know why I'm humming and hawing. I want brown. Let's see if I got a terracotta. Terracotta. Well, it's not going to be right, is it? That's going to be too light. What's that? Ashfelton. That's a really dark chocolatey brown. Let's go with that one. Right. Make a break time, guys. This is going to be what it is. This will be the end of doing these. And as I said, then tomorrow, well, tomorrow for me, it won't be tomorrow for you. Um, tomorrow, I will then come in and cut these up and we'll be putting it all together. And we'll see what the end results look like. So again, I'm coming in and just putting bits of design down here. Um, it is looking a bit New Mexico, Southwestern. I don't mind that, but it wasn't my intention. Um, but I'm okay with it because I like that style anyway. I, to, mm, I was going to say I have to make sure that I cut this in the right direction, but to be honest, there's only going to be one cut anyway. It's not going to be a mystery cut. I have to look at the piece when I cut it to decide which direction the things are going to be in. So, wonder whether I want two in the other direction. I think I do. Not a huge expanse of it, just. So 
try and get just one bit right on the edge there. Let's just see if I can do that bit so it's pointing upwards. Right. Let's see if I can get my fingers in the way. I hope this is in screen because I can't look through this and hold this down at the moment. This feels like it needs something. I was going to not do any in the middle, but just a hint of will do. Come on, up you come. And I think it's done. I don't want to do any more to this. I think we've achieved what I needed to achieve. Right, um, let me just peel this off here. I don't want it stuck anywhere. Right, I'm going to show you each of them in turn. There you go. I love that one. That's just working for me. This was the jungle one. And this is the one we've just done, which is sort of the southwestern one. I think that's a success. Right, going to pause the video for you. I'm going to have a massive clean up here. I'm probably going to change the mat or at least clean up a lot. And I'll see you in two seconds. For me, it'll be tomorrow. Um, and then we're going to cut stuff up and finish off the folders. So thanks for your patience, guys. I know this is a long one, but we had to rectify something, didn't we? So here we are back again, next morning for me, um, two seconds probably for you. These are the prints, all nice and dry. Um, that's possibly one of my favorites. But then I think that's possibly one of my favorites and that's possibly one of my favorites as well. So we're coming to the exciting meet now. Um, this section of the video shouldn't take that long to do. I just wanna make sure that I've done everything right. So these are the file folders. I have two of them that are black and one of them that's blue. The blue one is for this one. And I debated long and hard about the dimensions because this is 11 inches wide and I know it's a 12 by 12 sheet. However, I do know that I will never get it in all the way up to the edge. So I was thinking, where should I go to? And I'm thinking if I do 10 and a quarter inches, that'll give me a bit of leeway either side, which then get, gives me an inch and three quarters for here and I think it'll be fine. And I don't mind if there's a slight border around um, the edge of the image as well. So I'm, I'm, I couldn't do more than one um, piece because obviously I can't make 12 by 12s identical. And that's the joy of doing um, gel printing. They're always different. So I think time is to be brave now. I need to cut the panels of card down to the right size. So my ever faithful guillotine I think I'm going to start with the blue one. Now, I need to remember that um, the strip I cut off is going to be down the spine, and I'm quite liking that strip there. So if I bring this into ten and a quarter, where's ten and a quarter gone? One, two, three, that is right. So that will give me that. So if I show you, I'll have that down there. If I turn it this way, I'll end up with that and I quite like the first version so I think I'm just going to be brave and bring the guillotine down. So let's make sure it's ten and a quarter because it's quite important I get this right. So that will be the cover and that will be the spine. So let's put that to one side and do the same with let's see the green one. Now I did look at these earlier on just to help me not waste your time. The only one with a real bit of interest down the spine is there because I think if I do that, if that's ten and a quarter, I get that, but it's not very interesting and I quite like this area. I don't mind that there's a bit of white at the top. It's it's mine. It's for me. It's not it's not an art piece for anyone else except myself. It just I like to have um, things in my craft cave that are actually my creations. I think that's a lovely piece. I might actually put it that way up, to be honest, when it's in, in the spine. And on to the very last one. Right, I debated long and hard about this because there are so many things on here I actually do like. Now, if I go down here, I get, I think, the most detail. So I'd have all of that as a strip down there. This one I played around with the idea of, and there's ten and a quarter, and I get all of that down there. So I'm I'm a bit, mm, don't know. I do quite like that though. 
what was this one? This is a hard thing because you know when you cut it, you cut it. If there is no going back at this point. See, that's quite nice, but I wouldn't make that a spine. I think this was the other option I like the look of. But then I'd have a band through them. I think we're going to go this way. I've been debating this one most of the morning. And I think we're just going to go with it. And funnily enough, it cut right down the edge of that. Unintentional, but I like that. So, now we get rid of the guillotine. And let's try and put the first one together. Now, I'm not going to do each of them with you. I'm just going to do one and then I'll pause the video, do the others and then come back. So, right. I wonder whether... I'm thinking if I did it this way round, then that image would kind of go around the corner, which wasn't something I was thinking about, to be honest. I quite like that. Right. Now, I know I'm going to open these up because I know if you keep the thing in the right format, sometimes it's hard to get stuff in. I also find that when it comes to pushing it all the way down, I need to get something else to help me push it down. Just to get all the way to the bottom. See, I like that. Now, I did say in the beginning I'm not doing anything on the back, purely because I only have enough prints to do um, the spine in this, but also because these rivets are here, the image would then stop by there, and it would just it would just bother me. So I've decided not to do anything at all. If you're looking at the back of my, my book, it's probably because I've dropped it on the floor. Right, I like that. Okay. See, that's a lovely way, it would be lovely if I had it straight. That's a lovely way to dress up a file folder. That was actually quite quick. Let's, let's do that with all of them. I wasn't going to do them with all you on screen, but why not? That, that one boded quite well. Right, this one. It doesn't really matter which way I put the pieces in here, because the way I cut it, oh, actually I did cut it that way, didn't I? If I do it that way round, okay, I'll, I don't mind continuing the pattern on. As I said, that wasn't what I was planning to do in the first place, but I'm holding my finger on here because then it forces the edge of the card, the plastic card, not to slip and um, rip up the edge or anything. And this one can go in here. Having it straight-ish would be a good idea, Griffiths. Okay, I'm happy with that. Very happy with that. So you're not going to be able to see them really well because obviously my camera can only be at a certain height. Right, this one there really isn't any reason for me to try and marry it up because I don't even know where I cut it off from. Cut it off from there. Which means we're happy. Okay, let's go that way. So... Holding my finger down on there just so that it forces the edge of the card to press up against the edge of the cardboard. Um, the card that I've got the print on. And this goes in here. I'm trying to get reasonably central. There you go. So as you can see, I mean, let's see if I turn them on the side. So I love the way that that's actually given me something that's uniquely mine. It also gives me something in my craft cave that I'm using for storage that is going to look absolutely beautiful on my shelves. And I know no one else in the world has got these. And they're just, just ring binders, but I've used the plastic covered ones just so I can actually get some of these beautiful prints in there. So I'm loving that. So hopefully, guys, you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, as you can see, I've made them. Um, I just, I like the way they turned out. I think that's a lovely way to present my art, plus make something look really unique on the shelves of my craft cave bookshelves. And, and I'm gonna sort all my stencils now into these. So as I said, this is gonna be the old, old stencils. This is probably gonna be the PME Art, PM Artist Studio stencils. And this is gonna be my own range of stencils, because I really do. I think that's beautiful. I love that one. That, that's it's possibly my favourite. So, right, on that note, let's get this video finished. 
and I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time, bye-bye now.